All right, this is episode 31 of Survival Medicine. This is uh, Bites and Stings, part three. We're going to talk about bees, wasps, and ants. These all belong to the uh, family of Hymenoptera. Um, the other title of this uh, presentation could be How to Treat Allergic Reactions, because that's basically uh, the problem that we get into with uh, bees, wasps, and ants. So when people say they got bit by an ant, uh, I guess technically that may be true. The ant holds on to you with its mandibles, but the actual reaction that you get is from a sting. The ant swings its abdomen around and stings you, just like a bee or a wasp would. Um, a bee deposits its stinging mechanism uh, into you and uh, flies off. Uh, this essentially will kill the bee. Uh, ants and wasps, however, can sting multiple times. And so again, imagine this without the wings. This could be an ant. It holds on to you with its mandible, and then the stinger at the uh, last part of the abdomen is uh, what delivers the, the toxin. Now, very rarely, the toxin load itself may be the cause of death. Um, again, but this is really uncommon. This would be in the attacks where uh, somebody disturbs a, a, you know, the, the killer bees and gets stung you know, a thousand times. And so you just have this really unusual high toxic load. Uh, again, but that's really, really uncommon. Most of the problem that we get into is when you get an allergic reaction related to the sting. So when the the venom of the uh, the, the the Hymenoptera uh, insect enters the body, it stimulates uh, your immune system in specifically these cells called mast cells. Now mast cells will take the uh, the venom uh, it'll coat the venom with some uh, antibodies which are IgE antibodies if anybody's particularly interested and then when they bind to the surface of the mast cell it causes all these little uh, vacuoles or these little containers inside the mast cell to go to the surface and release and dump histamine it dumps other things like you know some types of prostaglandins and tumor necrosis factor and all these other things but it's mostly the histamine that we, we uh, get worried about. So this is a, what your histamine molecule looks like. So several carbons, a few hydrogens, and some nitrogens. And what does histamine do? Well, it does several things. Bronchoconstriction is a term for a narrowing of the airways. So basically you've got smooth muscle around your airways, your trachea and your bronchioles. And this smooth muscle contracts, narrowing the airway diameter. Uh, it also does something called vasodilation, and this is related to blood vessels. So you also have smooth muscle around your blood vessels, and this is causes that smooth muscle to relax, enlarging your blood vessels. Now this can cause pooling of the blood, right? You only have a several liters of blood circulating in your body, and you can imagine if you just dilated all your vessels, gravity would pull the blood towards your feet. Uh, and when people pass out uh, because they see something happen, like uh, if somebody's watching a blood draw and they pass out, or watching something that's traumatic and they pass out, that's typically what happens. Their blood pools in their legs and they uh, don't have enough blood flow to their head and they pass out. And when you pass out, you equalize the distance above the ground from your head to your feet and the, the blood goes back to where it's supposed to. I, you also can get this separation of endothelial cells. So endothelial cells line your organs, they uh, make up your blood vessels, they do a lot of different things, and, and histamine can cause some separation of the endothelial cells, so you get some space uh, related to that, you get some extra fluid, and this is what you, uh, happens when you develop hives. Um, the other term for hives is urticaria, and I'll show you a picture of that in a, in a second. Histamine can cause some very intense itching, uh, almost to the borderline of pain. Um, and, you know, so there could be some uh, some crossover between the, the pain uh, sensation and the itching. And you can also get the gastric secretion. Histamine will stimulate uh, hydrochloric acid release in the stomach. In fact, if you hear of people that take Zantac or Tagamet for um, you know, stomach problems or stomach ulcer problems, that is actually a type of histamine blocker. Benadryl or, or diphenhydramine is a histamine blocker. Uh, one hits the H1 receptor, one hits the H2 receptor. So here's a picture of some hives um, or urticaria. So you get these splotchy red areas. Sometimes they're raised. You can actually feel them as a bump over the skin. 
Uh, occasionally they can have some central clearing so you see this uh, ring of red with some kind of more normal skin color in the center. Uh, and here's a good example where you can actually see the raised bumps of the hives. Uh, so again, from just a local effect of an allergic reaction, uh, you can have pain at the site, you can have redness of the site, you can develop these small vesicles. Uh, a vesicle is just like a fluid-filled bubble, um, like a similar to a blister. Uh, the vesicles could be clear, or they could have kind of a, a white coloration to the material inside of it. Here's an, uh, here's an example of one. Uh, this is due to a fire ant sting. So you can see it almost looks like there's a little uh, area of pus-filled thing, but it's not pus-filled, it's just uh, cellular debris. Uh, this is not something that's infectious or needs an antibiotic. Now if you develop a very severe allergy, you know, we're talking about this urticaria, these hives, and then you get the flushed skin uh, and the drop in your blood pressure due to the vasodilation. You can start having wheezing um, or difficulty breathing, very similar to uh, what an asthma patient would experience. And then there's something called angioedema, which uh, you just start filling the extracellular areas with a lot of fluid, and you get this tissue swelling, uh, very noticeable in like the lips and the face or around the eyes. The eyes just look real puffy. The lips can get really enlarged. The tongue can get enlarged. So what do you do if you're developing something rather than just a minor uh, localized reaction and you're getting into this more generalized hives? Uh, this is something that needs to be treated. You um, Just getting hives doesn't mean you're going to progress to anaphylaxis or this deadly form of an allergy. Uh, although that does start raising your level of concern the more severe uh, allergic reaction you're seeing. So when somebody comes in uh, with a pretty significant allergic reaction, they've got the hives, they've got the bad itching, but they're not really wheezing. Uh, they don't show signs of, of significant compromise on their blood pressure. You know, I'll give them uh, diphenhydramine, uh, which is the generic uh, name for Benadryl. They get an adult will get 50 milligrams by mouth. I'll give them some H2 blockers. So diphenhydramine is an H1 blocker. I'll give them some H2 blockers like uh, Zantac or Tagamet. Uh, the generic names are renanidine and cimetidine. Uh, and you know, the, the dosing varies depending on which one you have. It can be 25 milligrams. It can be 75 milligrams. Uh, and if you move up into a perhaps in my mind a little bit more severe allergy, I'm going to give you prednisone, which is a steroid, and that's one milligram per kilogram. Uh, you could give it orally or you could give it IV. It works basically the same in terms of speed and effectiveness, whether it's oral or IV. I would use the IV route if somebody has significant uh, swelling in their mouth or if they're vomiting due to the allergic reaction and they can't take oral pills orally. Otherwise, oral is fine. Um, and again, if it's more than just a, a skin rash, perhaps their blood pressure is uh, a little low or I can hear some wheezing, uh, then I'm going to give them a dose of epinephrine and this is one milligram just as an IM or intramuscular injection. Um, now if you're getting to the point where you're needing epinephrine, this is a, a more worrisome allergic reaction. Right? If you're showing airway compromise or, or low blood pressure, you're really starting to get into the realm of anaphylaxis. And so if you get anaphylaxis or the severe allergic reaction, you're going to need ongoing treatment. A single dose of epinephrine is probably not going to cut it. You're going to need to be on an epinephrine drip. If you start showing signs of significant airway compromise, we're going to have to put the plastic tube down your throat to protect your airway from closing off. Um, you know, the IV steroids get continued, IV fluids. And anaphylaxis is a life-threatening condition. There's probably somebody out there that's listening to this that carries around an EpiPen in their uh, purse or backpack just because they have a severe reaction to things like peanuts or, or perhaps you know bee stings. Uh, and so they realize that this is a, a very significant uh, life-threatening condition. And if you've ever had anaphylaxis before, you really do need to be carrying around an EpiPen with you at all times. Uh, and make sure your friends and family know how to administer the epinephrine. So if you ever get to the place uh, in your condition where you could not administer it to yourself, people around you that are close to you need to know how to do it. So uh, anaphylaxis is something that really needs to be in the hospital under the care of somebody that knows what they're doing with uh, anaphylaxis. 
so not something to mess around with. So if you've got a patient, uh, a, f a friend, a family member, or just somebody that you've encountered uh, just in the normal walk of life that is showing signs of, of allergic reaction, if you have a little med kit with you with some Benadryl and some Tagamet, uh, that can go a long way, just administering those medications to help dampen uh, the allergic reaction uh, while we're waiting for a more advanced health care. Uh, if, <clears throat> you know, in my kit, um, you know, I have a, an EpiPen. Uh, I do not have uh, severe allergies, but this is just to administer to other people in case they come across something very, you know, somebody that's very sick uh, and um, with a bad reaction. And and but getting getting these patients that are wheezing, um, or have, you know passing out due to the drop in blood pressure or a very weak pulse, uh, those are ones that you really need to get to somebody that knows uh, how to treat this. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll try and get more videos out. The next one on bites and sting series will be uh, North American snakes.